Okay, thank you so much. My name's Ryan Mason. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's right, the fucking Hamptons of Chicago. Right, you're lucky to have me. A little bit about myself. I'm a dad who listens to sports podcasts, which means I get a lot of advertisements that are for dads who listen to sports podcasts. And recently I heard an advertisement that was for erectile dysfunction. And it said that erectile dysfunction is like a check engine light for the male body. And I believe it because my wife can ignore it for months. <laughs> You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Get the oil changed, right? I love doing comedy because I get to travel a little bit for comedy, which is fun. Recently I was in Comedy Hotbed, rural Indiana, telling jokes. Yep, uh, Mike Pence is here. Uh, I was doing a show in rural Indiana, and I, before I got to the show, uh, the showrunner told me, hey, we just have two rules for this show, no cursing and no politics. And I was like, no problem. But on the inside, I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so I did a little research about where I would be performing, and it turns out the next town up the road was famous, because their mayor is a dog. <laughs> now, as a comedian, I have to talk about that. But technically, it's politics. <laughs> so here's the joke I did for the fine people of rural Indiana. Okay, you're gonna, I'm gonna pretend you're all a little bit dumber. <laughs> It's so good to be here in Indiana, you guys! Hey, have you heard about this town up the road? They're pretty silly. Their mayor is a dog. But I guess it's okay. He won the popular vote. Which is kind of surprising, because his wife's a bitch. And now I never have to go back to rural Indiana, you guys. I made it out. I made it out. Yes, we did it. Uh, I am a dad. I have two kids. Good for the parents who are out tonight. Clap if you're a parent. And those little bastards are at home. Good for you. You did it. I have two kids, uh, which means I don't sleep that much anymore. Uh, I have two kids. Uh, I have a wife who talks in her sleep. That's true. She talks in her sleep. Sometimes she screams in her sleep. She sleeps with a cat right above her head that licks its asshole so hard it sounds like it's trying to salvage burnt toast. My wife does talk in her sleep. She screams in her sleep. That's true. I'm used to it, though. We've been married for a little while. You get used to your wife. Um, I can remember a time where she got rigid as a board and she just went, gross! And went right back to sleep. And I was like, okay, all right. And I'm fine with it. The next morning she came up to me and she said, oh, hey, by the way, I had a sex dream about you last night. And I was like, I'll take it! I'm trying to stay married, right guys? Right? I do have two kids, I have two kids. I've got a good one and then I have a fat one. Uh, the fat one is in the 100th percentile for weight. He's in the 100th percentile for weight. He's in the 50th percentile for height, okay? So if you're trying to picture what he looks like, he's a rectangle. <laughs> Very heavy. Uh, I don't give a shit about what he eats, obviously. Uh, my 
my main goal is to not end up like one of those dads on Maury Povich that has to defend themselves in front of a 200 pound toddler, okay? That's my goal. But I'm fine, I gotta, I gotta stay on it, all right? I'm practicing, so I need your help. When I point at you, I want you to boo me like I'm a dad on Maury Povich, and I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do when I'm on Maury Povich. Can you do that? They've never booed in here before, okay? Except Blake, one time, okay? All right, can you do it? Can you boo? Okay, go. Boo! More, I need more, in the back. I'm scared of him. That's what I'm gonna do, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I love my kids, I love my kids, and I'm trying to find out if they actually love each other. Uh, but I have two boys, and that can be kind of tough, you know what I mean? My uh, younger son, he really loves his older brother, he wants to be like his older brother. And sometimes he does things that annoy his older brother. Um, recently he was trying to give his older brother a hug from behind, a uh, behind hug. and. Uh, my oldest son didn't like that. Um, so he did something a little bit extreme. He turned around, he grabbed him by the penis, and screamed in his face as loud as he could. He just went, ah! And then my youngest son also started screaming out of fear and pain. He was just like, ah! And then I started screaming because I was witnessing something almost primal in nature. I was like, oh my God! And suffice it to say that that was a pretty memorable moment for the other people in Target. <laughs> but I love my kids. You guys have kids? You guys have kids? No kids? You have kids? Good for you, man. Good for you. Just one? Fucking smart. First of all, you did it. We had to have two. My wife is a person with a really big heart. She cares too much. That's, that she's an animal lover. She loves animals. Once a week, she sends me a picture from the Humane Society of a dog that she thinks that we should adopt. Isn't that sweet? But usually they're the shittiest dogs at the Humane Society. This is true, two weeks in a row, two weeks in a row, what, my wife sent me two different dogs, both of which had zero eyeballs. She went 0 for 4. On dog eyeballs. And God bless the Humane Society, they're trying to sell these fucking dogs, you guys. They're trying to move some fucking dogs out of that Humane Society. And they, would try, they had to write up on some of these dogs, and one of the dogs I remember, I don't remember his exact name, let's call him Patches, but they said about Patches, they were like, hey, this dog may not have eyes, not a great sense of sight. Uh, this dog was also deaf, buried that part too, okay? They said, but Patches has an incredible sense of smell. Oh, what do you mean, like every other fucking dog ever? But that deaf, dumb, and blind dog sure was a mean pit bull, you guys, let me tell you. I love uh, having kids. I like being a dad. Uh, clap for the dads. Give it up for the dads. One time. Please. Give it up for this dad specifically right here. This guy brought his own koozie to this. I don't know what that's about. That's a real fucking dad move right there. He just like outdadded me on that one. I'm fucking good for you, man. That's awesome. Um, so coming out and doing shows like this is really awesome because I get to be around younger people, um, younger comedians, which is awesome. Uh, I love being around younger comedians, but sometimes they don't get all my jokes. They all dress like it's still the 90s, too, you know what I mean, right? Which is a pain in the ass. I see like a young person who looks like Sally Jesse Raphael, I'm like, this is a choice? Um, uh, recently I was talking to a friend of mine and I brought up the book Old Yeller. And they didn't know what Old Yeller was, so I had to explain to them the book Old Yeller. Right? Quickly, because we were having a conversation. I was like, okay, it's this book, it's about a dog who saves this little boy, and then this little boy and this dog, they become best friends. 
right? This dog, they're having adventures. He's getting them out of jams. And then what happens? The dog gets rabies. Unbelievable. <laughs> Tragic circumstances for this dog. And the kid has to do the unthinkable. He has to kill his best friend, right? This dog. And as he raises the gun to shoot his best friend, this dog, the dog grabs the gun with his little paws and goes, Do it! Do it! And that's why they call the dog Old Yeller. 